So I got an email from somebody who was asking me, uh, what should I do if I'm feeling under psychic attack from somebody, somebody else? And this can happen. Uh, it happened in my case, in fact, um, several times, but the most memorable case was when I was living in Italy and uh, I went to uh, the house of a woman who was grieving the loss of one of her children. I think her son had died and she'd created a kind of mausoleum to her son that the whole family had to live in. The entire house was like a church and they all had to wear black and they all had to be somber and they all had to be fixated in a state of grieving that she wouldn't allow them to, uh, to um, relieve themselves from. They couldn't, they couldn't get on with their lives. Everything was frozen into this state of solidified intense grief that nothing could relieve. And uh, when we were there, we did some chanting, it's called Purita chanting, which is basically an, infus an infusion of positive energy, positive, uh, uh, positive intent, um, encouraging the, those that have passed to move on. And, and, you know, we also talked to them about how it was possible to move on in life and how they could set up certain rituals, memorials, plant a tree, etc. But, you know, begin to gently move on with their lives. And uh, I left. And uh, in the middle of the night, I felt that this fury was attacking me. It was like an absolute fury. How do I feel it? It was just like, it was like a kind of energetic wind of fury that was penetrating into my field of awareness and kind of battering me. And my initial reaction was fear, of course. Who wouldn't be afraid? This is this is frightening. Uh, but you know, I had enough training to sort of recognize what was happening, and I remembered the way to protect yourself in these circumstances is through affirming something that is true, is to affirm something that has the power of truth. The power of truth is greater than the power of evil. Evil is always a distortion of life force, whereas true life force that is tuned in alignment with the way things are is always essentially good. This is why good always wins over evil because evil is is a, a distortion and truth is intrinsic. It's, it's not contrived, whereas evil is temporary. Uh, goodness is not temporary, it's eternal. So uh, that which is evil, that which is bad, that which is in a state of fury cannot survive in the light of truth. You can't defeat it in any case, it can survive uh, in relation to it, but it can't defeat it, can't penetrate it. And the way I did this was um, just through chanting the refuges, the three refuges, which of course it's not going to work for everybody else, it works for me. I just went Buddhang Saranunga Chami, Dhammang Saranunga Chami, Sangang Saranunga Chami, Buddhang Saranunga Chami, Dhammang Saranunga Chami, Sangang Saranunga Chami. So these words are words where I'm saying I take refuge in the Buddha, I take refuge in the Dhamma, I take refuge in the Sangha. So I take refuge in awakening. I take refuge in the truth of that which is awakened to, and I take refuge in the community of people who participate in that awakening. And just the power of that was enough to create a shield against which this um, fury couldn't penetrate. And so the experience of that shield was that I felt arising within me a confidence, a sense of safety, a sense of well-being, a sense of refuge, essentially. Uh, a sanctuary against which this fury can, could not reach me. And this principle applies in all cases where but whenever we may feel we're under some sort of attack from some sort of external force. Of course, we, we don't really know whether where it's coming from, really. It could be, and uh, for, for some reason, I knew it was this woman who was furious that I had interfered in this freezing of everybody's life 
that she'd imposed on her family. She was furious that I'd come and tried to upset it. She was furious that I'd used chanting, which she saw as some sort of white magic that was trying to unravel the spell that she was holding everybody under. I just knew that 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 was what was going on and that was where this anger was coming from. Whether she was doing it consciously or not, I don't know. But what I did learn living in Italy is that people are up to a lot more black magic than I ever imagined. Black magic's big in Italy. Uh, people uh, perform spells on each other all the time. So maybe she was doing it intentionally or maybe it was her unconscious. I, I don't know. So if you are experiencing a sense of being attacked by something outside of yourself, um, then you have to find, well, what is the thing that gives rise to a sense of refuge? Maybe it's a Christian prayer. Maybe it's a pagan prayer. Uh, maybe whatever it is, you have to find what that thing is that your heart has trust in and assert it. Uh, it could be a mantra of some sort. You have to find a mechanism that you can grab onto like a raft so that you can then begin to assert and realign yourself to the intrinsic goodness of your that, that is at the core of your being. So you awaken it. Like so for me, chanting the three refuges is like opening a computer program, you know, it's like knowing the right combination of keys, control, alt, delete. And that opens uh, that opens a program that helps me uh, manage my computer. Uh, so chanting the three refuges opens the program that helps me access the core intrinsic values at the heart of my being and awaken them so that they uh, function as a shield, as a resistance to that which is trying to penetrate. Of course, this doesn't have to be applied uh, in the face of what might be called a psychic attack. It actually makes total sense for all situations in our life. If we are feeling uh, that we are being, um, you know, uh, pursued by a bad mood, for example, or pursued by resentment or pursued by jealousy, something that keeps, in a sense, taking our energy and attention over and putting us into a very bad space or an unpleasant space. You can use this same principle of taking refuge to try and create a point of separation between the, uh, the uh, bad state or the evil state or the aggressive state or the dark state or the moody state or the jealous state or whatever it may be. You can try and create a point of separation between that and the unshakable, untarnishable luminosity at the core of our being. And this is basically the trick. It's a form of white magic, essentially. You can use that language if, if it's what turns you on. <laughs> or, but um, it's just deploying a skillful means. And it's really the only way to defeat uh, the fear that are, can arise when we feel something kind of trying to push its way into our into our lives, into our minds. It defeats it every time. Uh, once you have confidence in that, then you know it, it gives you a certain gives you a certain sense of safety. And the only reason that we are troubled by these psychic attacks is because they penetrate. And they penetrate because we succumb to the fear. We succumb to the anxiety and from a place of anxiety and fear where the core, the essential core of our heart, the well-being of our heart, the luminosity of our heart is switched off, it's inaccessible, then we have no defense and we will be invaded. So I'll leave that for your consideration. Hope that helps.